Scott, the UAW is sending a serious message with this. They're in it for the long haul, it seems. Yeah, Roop, they certainly are in it for the long haul. I mean, you know, think about it. We're at 28 days right now. The last GM strike went for about 40 days for a little bit of perspective here. But 28 days living off of $500 a week for strike pay, it sounds pretty intense. And for the guys that are making a lot of money at the top, you know, maybe maybe it's a, a big differential for them. But I talked with some workers who are so passionate, they say they'd be out here even if they were making nothing. But as far as I see, like the companies were expecting us to just roll over and show our bellies like we have or the UAW has for years. And now that we have a president that won't do that, it's a little hard for them. Ryan Porkrivka is a second generation auto worker. He's been picketing for 28 days at Ford Assembly in Wayne, and he's in it for the long haul, despite living off $500 a week on strike pay. I feel happy that I'm even making $500 a week. I know when the UAW originally started, people would go out on strike and they didn't get paid anything. And honestly, I would be more than willing to do that. He's passionate because he's fighting for not just auto workers, but America's middle class. He says he supports the latest walk off of Ford's truck plant in Kentucky. Just shows that things are getting serious. Uh, our our leadership wants wants results. Ford saying the Kentucky strike was uncalled for with executives believing progress was being made on a deal. Kentucky trucking produces 25 billion in profits for the company, but this is about more than just money. According to Ford, the shutdown could cause thousands of layoffs. Kentucky truck plant is one of the most important manufacturing plants of any kind in America. This is certainly a historic moment. David Strubler, professor of organizational leadership at Oakland University, says the solution to the strike is an understanding between the UAW and the big three. Just even one piece, just one piece of common ground. Where is it? And can we work on that one piece of common ground and what I call co-create an innovative solution? that fully meets both needs. Each of the automotive companies has brought numerous offers to the table, trying to meet the UAW's demands, but nothing is quite moving the needle. They say they gave us seven contracts the last time um, our CEO talked, but the first two or three were jokes. Now, you heard that with the offers. Now, Ford uh, executives met a little bit earlier this afternoon to really talk about some of the fallout from that Ford trucking plant going offline. And one of the major things that they said was that in this latest offer, they're kind of maxed out here when it comes to how much money they're putting into this deal. They may be able to finagle where that money goes, but they're really kind of stuck at an impasse with the UAW. Sean Fain expected to talk tomorrow. He could be calling more plants up. We'll have to see what happens. Reporting live in Wayne, Scott Walchak, Fox 2 News. Root, back to you. Yeah, Scott, you talk about the kind of big products that are made there. You're talking about the F-Series Super Duty, the Ford Expedition, the Navigator. When they say that this generates $25 billion a year in revenue, at first you got to double check that number, but that's serious. $25 billion bucks a year. They're really hitting it in the jugular. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And yeah, I double checked the numbers. Trust me, 25 billion, it sounds like a whole lot. And it's about 15 or 16% of Ford's total profits, right? So that's a huge plan. Now, with Fane taking to Facebook tomorrow, you got to think that Stellantis and GM are certainly paying attention to what just happened at Ford. So we'll have to see what happens. We will be watching carefully, and I know you'll be on it every step of the way. Scott Wolchek for us live tonight. Thank you.